Hey guys, this is Mark from OCLolic again. Um, I'm here with uh, yet another motherboard unboxing review. And uh, this time I'm talking about the Asus uh, Z170A. Um, yeah, I've already been, uh, been showing you around the Deluxe and this is basically the, the scaled down version of it which comes at the, at the more attractive price point so you actually don't really have to, to, to break a bank to afford this motherboard. Um, yeah, as I already mentioned with uh, the unboxing review on the Deluxe, um, Intel Skylake CPUs are out since of today and that means the, also the Z170 chipset has been introduced so and this board is based on that very chipset yeah let's have a, a walk around the box uh, as you can see Intel uh, chipset C170 uh, supported supports sixth generation uh, core Intel core processors uh, LGA 1151 socket is supported uh, compared to the predecessor that was LGA 1150 so there is an additional pin needed on, on, this, uh, on this board as well as some, some uh, different routing to the, um, to the dim slots and also the VRM and stuff for example to, to support uh, the DDR4 dims which go in here uh, the previous generation Z97 supported DDR3 so yeah, finally that transition is happening on the mainstream platforms. Yeah, well, furthermore, um, NVIDIA SLI and AMD Crossfire are supported. There is um, HDMI with uh, DTS Connect and DTS Direct Sound supported as well. And this board is apparently ready for Windows 10, which has been launched on like 29th uh, this year. Uh, if you check out this sticker, maybe if you've already spotted it, there is a premium Diana Cruiser access code in the, included in the bundle of this board and a 15 day premium account to play World of Warships. Uh, never played this game so far, but yeah, who knows, maybe I'll give it a shot one day. Um, yeah, if we look around the, the, the box on the, on the sides, there is nothing really special. Uh, nothing we've not yet been talking about, the I main USB 3.1 and which supports 10 gigabits per second. I'll uh, talk a little bit about this later on, 5-way optimization as well. Um, some more details in some more languages and stuff. And so yeah, let's go to the more interesting thing, which is the back of the box, which always contains like a ton of information. And in this case, um, let me quickly walk you around the, the motherboard since there is a nice schematic here. Um, yeah, display port, HDMI port, two USB 3 ports, uh, Intel on, two USB 3.1 ports, um, where there is also a Type C connector, and then there is an H8 channel audio solution which supports DTS. There is also the optical out here. Um, those are the dots showing the, the PCI Express 3 slots, they're all Gen 3, the first one is X16, I think this one is X8 and the other one's X4, but we will have a closer look at that later on when we see the board and flip it to the back side. Um, AC supports on this board also their um, Crystal Sound 3 audio implementation. Uh, which comes with the following features, a power pre-regulated, top-notch audio profile, EMI protection cover, audio shielding. The EMI protection is also actually this uh, metal cover, which is on top, sits on top of, uh, of an ALC. I oh, know actually in this case it's an RTL 892, it's actually um, the scaled down version of the ALC 1150. Um, yeah, if we continue, unique uh, depop circuit, circuitry, Audio amplifier, separate layer for left right track, premium Japan main capacitors, the capacitors are down here. Uh, compared to the Deluxe, there is basically everything, there is a little less of everything. Um, also like the, the, the amount of, the, or the number of uh, premium caps down here is like uh, half or even a third of what's on the, on the Deluxe. But yeah, as I said, uh, you won't have to break a bank to afford this for this board. So. Yeah, let's go to the to more software feature part of the of the board. We have uh, the typical five-way optimization. Um, when you install 
uh, the ASUS software, you can easily control your motherboard from within Windows, you can overclock it, you can uh, do lots of things. Also, you have a power saving feature and so on and so forth. Um, apart from that, this board is also ready for M.2 drives. I mean, here you see an M.2 slot right below the, the four or the six SATA uh, ports and SATA Express port. Um, the M.2 slot um, is connected to the uh, via three, four via an X4 PCI Express Gen 3 interface. So that means 32 gigabyte of bandwidth available that is pretty that is definitely a lot i mean you can pump through like four gigabytes per second and uh, uh, if you do on an ssd which is that fast so yeah that is that is a lot it's really quick um, yeah as i said nvme ready it also supports pcie RAID, which is basically a new feature that's available since uh, nvme is out in the market and yeah, if you ever go and raid two NVMe drives, then you will notice um, transfer speeds of something like four to six gigabytes per second sequential transfers, and that is really that's massive. It's insane. Um, USB 3.1 supported as well on this motherboard with 10 gigabits of bandwidth. Basically, bandwidth has been doubled compared to USB 3.0, where it was five gigabits. Um, if you do the mouse and um, uh, want to know how many gigabytes per second that is, divide it by 8 and then you end up at 1.25 gigabytes per second. Um, yeah, Turbo LAN is supported, basically a software implementation from ASUS which um, allows packet prioritization. So if you're downloading something and playing at the same time, you can say you want to prioritize the gaming traffic and then the software is taking care of like um, keeping, uh, making sure that the download software is not really using up or eating up all the bandwidth available so you still have like decent pings and yeah, you won't lose in FPS shooters just because you have a, a crappy ping. Um, Crystal 3 sound implementation, we've already been talking about this. Um, uh, clean power, noise isolation and uh, Japan made premium capacitors uh, for yeah for a cleaner signal yeah overall a decent fe feature package so yeah let's flip it around and um, remove the board from the box so this is actually it you can also see the the shroud up here again like with the deluxe board but let's have a closer look at this later on first we work our way through to the to the delivery um, all the different manuals so there we go it's not really like the most interesting thing to, to look at the manuals um, some more stuff and here we go this is actually a cool little toy um, it's a CPU installation tool you can put it on top of your CPU and then you can better grip it like this so it doesn't slip out of your finger and accidentally accidentally damages the, the, the pins in the CPU socket. So yeah, nice thing to have. Um, there are SATA cables, uh, three in total in this case. I mean, since this is a mid-range board or like a well-priced board, it's unlikely that people will attach uh, a ton of uh, SATA drives to, to this thing. So ASUS thinks three cables are enough. I personally think so as well. Um, the I.O. bezel, nothing special here, no no special painting has been done to it, no, yeah, just plain and simple. Uh, the Q connector, always practical, you can plug in all the, the, bar, the, the cables for power button, power lid and so on and so forth. Uh, nicely laid out on the front and on the back of the connector, so it's making it really easy. Uh, screw to attach the M.2 drive. And here we go with a SLI connector. And yeah, let's go to the board itself. As always, it comes in an anti static bag. We remove it. So yeah, here we have, uh, we have now 
an overview of the board. As, uh, as I already said, there is the nice shroud which has been introduced with the X99 motherboards, the, the white shroud. I personally think it looks really nice. I always like it when they put it on the motherboards. Then um, you have uh, a chipset cooler down here, uh, also with a white faceplate. Looks really nice as well. Um, we see the PCI Express connectors, the full size one. So this one is actually the X16, and this one is an X8, and this one is from here it looks like X8 as well. But if we yeah, if we switch it back on the back side. We also see that this is an X8. Um, what I always like is when there is a PCI Express X1 on top of the first uh, full size slot because it gives you that extra headroom between the graphics card and the CPU cooler. And if you imagine that you put here a large CPU cooler, you can already see, like from my hand, that if the graphics card would go in here then it's really really close and makes it for example difficult to, to uh, release the graphics card from the slot when you have a cooler installed so yeah there is just this like little bit more space which makes it easier to install and access the stuff um, it's also interesting to see there is a legacy slot on this board PCI uh, there is three X1 slots for personally I think that's definitely enough in terms of X1 um, yeah, if we go on to the bottom edge, you have a power switch down here, a very small one. It's cool that there actually is one. Uh, you can see the audio implementation, the crystal sound solution with a few uh, Japanese high quality caps. And uh, yeah, USB 2 additional ones for front panel um, audio. Now here is the audio connector, another USB 2. Um, a USB 3 connector, also for front USB 3, a fan header, which is cool to have down here to attach a fan, which would be here, like here in a case, or like more here. Um, yeah, all the connectors where you plug in your power cables and HDD LED and whatever. So here we have the M.2 with um, 32 gigabyte, uh, gigabit of bandwidth. You can install all sizes of M.2 cards. Uh, which you then just screw to the different holes. Um, yeah, here we go with the SATA ports, in total six SATA ports, and two of them can be combined to a SATA Express uh, connector, yeah, but yeah, in, in the end, SATA Express is not really widely available on the market, it didn't really have that much of an impact since, yeah, I mean, finally it gets replaced with uh, NVMe anyway, so that will then be a port where you really have some, some bandwidth available. Um, another USB 3.0 header, then you have the ATX power plug, the four DDR4 DIMM slots, um, yeah, the four DDR4 DIMM slots. Um, up here you have the 8-pin power connector, you have three more fan headers up here, and you have three fan headers here as well. So there is definitely plenty of fan headers, seven in total. Personally, I like where they position, basically where they, where they kind of like should be, in my opinion. Um, close to the fans on top of the, of the case, like on the top front and in top of it and then there is another three four for a fan which you put like here in the case and you could also wire like if you have a massive cooler to uh, the two fans to here if you're but yeah it's more likely that you will use that use the cpu fan for that um yeah overall if you have this board in your hands it doesn't doesn't really feel that heavy so it's really it's a it's an entry level to mid-range board which should come with a very competitive price. Um, the reason why it's not really heavy is that the coolers are, are not too large. Uh, apart from that, you also see that they're attached with like push pins and not really screwed to the motherboard. And yeah, it's all these little kind of things where you can see that um, Asus is saving a few bucks every year and there to, to reach a very competitive price point. Also, if you look at the, at the faces, I mean, the power design, it's, uh, 
It's definitely more than sufficient. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten phases for the CPU itself, and um, two phases for the for the DRAM slots. And there is another phase up here. Um, yeah, black metallic caps, high quality caps. But yeah, as I said, it's really it's really this this board is optimized towards uh, an attractive price point so uh, don't expect like the very 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 highest quality components on this PCB. Um, yeah, having a look at the uh, I.O. panel we see uh, two USB 2.0 ports, an HDMI display port, a DVI port and a VGA port, two USB 3 ports, two USB 3.1 ports with one type C uh, we can even attach a PS2 keyboard or mouse and then we have the audio interface with uh, five jacks and one digital um, um, yeah, connector. Um, flipping into the back side we see as I already mentioned uh, X16 slot, that's the legacy one X1, X1, PCI Express 3, X1, PCI Express Gen 3, um, X8, X8 was also Gen 3 and um, yeah what's also cool is here you see that uh, the audio solution has been separated from the rest of the PCI uh, from the rest of the PCB just to like uh, separate or to like um, remove some additional signal noise which could interfere with the audio causing like a, a lesser quality um, yeah, as I said, overall, to me, this looks like a like a decent motherboard. It will be interesting to see what it's going to cost. Um, certainly, if the price point is around something like 120 to 150 US dollars or, or euros, then it's uh, definitely a compelling offer. And yeah, we're curious to see how this one stacks up on our test bench as well. So guys, I hope it was interesting for you, I hope you learned something, I could tell you something about this board. Uh, thank you very much for watching, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Have a nice day, bye bye!